You had a chance to visit with Matt Stairs this morning to talk all things Phillies. Uh, I'm guessing Matt is a former player and coach feels all his talent will right the ship. Yeah, he does think the Phillies are snapping out of it. He's a Harper fan, of course. He likes Rob Thompson, by the way. Here's the interview. Uh, me and Matt Stairs earlier today. Always fun to welcome a first-time visitor to Philly Press Box Radio, and even more so when the guy happens to be a memorable former Phillies player. Let's say hello to 2008 World Series champion, Matt Stairs. Hey, Matt, welcome. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. Matt, you're the only person I know who's in a time zone that's one hour later than Eastern Daylight Time. I had a brain fart yesterday and forgot that you are Canadian and up in Eastern Canada. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, we're about an, we're an hour ahead, of you guys. So it's so if there's a delay in the show, it's because you have to cross the border properly, right? You have to go across immigration. So it might be a little delay or an echo. That's for sure. <laughs> uh huh. Well, Matt, uh, your longest stint with one team and your best seasons, I believe, came with those Oakland Athletics in the late 1990s. You played with guys like Ricky Henderson, Jose Canseco, and Mark McGuire. And you were with the A's during that memorable 1998 McGuire-Sosa home run record chase. Those must have been some fun years. Yeah, it was a good time. I mean, it was baseball back when it was, uh, you know, a lot of home runs were hit. The pitching wasn't as, as high as quality as it is now. Guys didn't throw as hard. Uh, but these guys were just, uh, you know, they were the Bash brothers, right? They went up and just hit home runs like no tomorrow. And, uh, and they hit for good averages as well, which was nice to see. So it was, it was definitely a, a great time. I think it, it helped me learn how to hit home runs playing with those guys, seeing how they set on certain pitches and certain you know, routines I went into. So it, uh, it, it definitely helped me out through my career. You played with a, a dozen different Major League Baseball franchises, but, you know, we in the Philly, South Jersey area, think of you as a Philly, of course, because you were here for, well, the latter part of 2008 and all of 2009, a couple of memorable seasons, certainly. So do you yourself follow the Phillies more closely than other former teams, or how does that work for you? I don't really watch a lot of baseball anymore. I just think the game has changed so much. I'm old school. I like the old school baseball and stuff. You know, I do. I, I wake up every morning to see that, uh, look at the box score, uh, see if they won or lost. I know they've, they've gone through a tough time uh, as of late, just before the uh, the All-Star game. But, you know, I still follow guys, you know, see how the, how the players are making out, how the team's making out. Uh, they're probably one of the only really teams I follow uh, to see how things are going. Speaking of the current Phillies, as you know, you, you mentioned – uh, they had that terrific start to the season, but yeah, not so great of late. They were 45 and 19 through early June, but since then they've struggled quite a bit. They're a little bit under 500, as a matter of fact. Can't seem to win a series. That could change tonight. How can a team with that much talent struggle this much for an extended period? It's baseball. I mean, honestly, it is. I mean, it, it's uh, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no answer to why uh, teams are struggling or players are struggling for quite a while. It just happens. Um, there's nothing you can do. You just continue working hard. You know, honestly, I think it's probably good that they struggled a little bit. It would have been tough going through a season of, of playing as well as they did the start of the season. So now all of a sudden they're, you know, they've been struggling to win a series since the All-Star break, or I guess it was the series before the All-Star break. It ticks you off, right? It gets you out there and, it, and you work hard. If anything, I think what happens is when you start struggling as a team, everyone tries to be that one hero. Instead of just sitting back and allowing the, the, the talent on the team. I know Bryce Harper struggled real bad. Um, and he was probably squeezing the bat a little too tight and swinging the pitches he probably shouldn't have, trying to do too much. So, you know, the biggest thing is just relax, go out there, and, and uh, they'll be fine. I mean, they're they're playing the Dodgers right now, and it seems like they've played the Dodgers well this year. So, uh, I expect them to get back on a run. And, hey, this is the time you want to get cold. Because, you know, the baseball goes up and down, up and down. Well, maybe they're down. Maybe they're going to be heading in the right direction when it comes to playoff time. And this is a key series for the Phillies, too, because you know, the Dodgers and the Phillies are likely going to have the two best records in the National League. The Phillies, with the win Tuesday night, pulled one and a half games ahead of the Dodgers, and they have won the season series now, which is important. Hey, speaking of the Dodgers, what are your impressions of that Shohei Otani? He's impressive. Uh, you know, all the big talk up here is that uh, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. is the, the best ball player in baseball. Uh, there's, there's a little argument with a, with a tremendous ball player in Philadelphia and Bryce Harper and Otani as well. I mean, the things he does, the stolen bases, the power, 
uh, on, you know, unfortunately he's not been able to pitch this year, but he's just, a, he's a game changer. Watching him step in that batter's box. He, he, he better be a game changer for making that much money. <laughs> really? He should, he, he shouldn't be making any outs, but it, yeah. it's impressive how good he is. Um, and the biggest thing for me is the way he plays the game. He plays the game right. He plays it hard. He respects the game, and, and uh, he really doesn't show up players. He just – he enjoys playing the game. And I hate using the word fun. Fun only a good time when you're winning. He, he enjoys when he comes to the ballpark, and you can tell. Yeah. Hey, Matt, the Phillies are in Los Angeles right now, as you mentioned. Hey, just wondering, did you have any memorable games against the Dodgers <laughs> over the years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. It, it, it's uh, – a lot of people, you know, I've done a lot of traveling. I was in London with the Phillies when they played the Mets series. And, yeah. um, you know, people still say, hey, do you remember, you know, what was going through your mind? I'm like, uh, yeah, I think I kind of remember. It was like a 3-1 count, fastball inside. You know, I hit the living crap out of it. You know, it's just one of those things where um, it was a huge home run. And, and Victor Reno's home run was huge as well. The two-run shot off of uh, the rookie pitcher, Wade. Yep. And Chooch got the big base at the left field. Then they brought in Brock, Broxton. And I don't think he gave up a home run since June or something like that. So it just, you know, the stars were lined up very well. You know, Victorino's two run home run, Chooch's base hit, and then, you know, the one I crushed the right field. So, um, yeah, it was it was definitely a, a memory that uh, I'll never forget. I know the Philly fans don't forget. And it was uh, definitely a game changer and, and a series changer. Well, I think. Anyone doing a first-time chat with Matt Flores is obligated to play the video of what you did on that October 9th, 2008, in the eighth inning against Jonathan Broxton. So here we go. Stairs rips one into the night, deep into right, way out of here. And Philadelphia gets a pinch hit, two-run shot. And the Phillies lead seven to five in the eighth. I never get tired of watching that. Hey, what, were you thinking, what were you thinking when you were jogging around the bases after crushing that ball? Don't trip. <laughs> and nothing really, man. You know, it, it's. I've been in so many situations of pinch hitting in my life, and, and I never put too much pressure on myself. It was, you know, for me, when I step in the batter's box, I have, you know, a thought process of, of staying with, within myself, keeping my approach, and hopefully the pitcher makes a mistake. And if you, and if you notice the video, you know, Russell Martin was calling for a little two-seamer away. Broxton just got to the point where he pulled a little bit and he threw it inside, you know, to the area where left-handers love. And, you know, it... It would have been interesting to see, you know, um, if he would have made his pitch, what would have happened? He didn't, took advantage of it. Then I hit first base and I thought, okay, you're on TV, big big time, do not trip on these damn bases. But, you know, it's I took the same approach every time, pinch hitting. You know, and I think that's why I had such a good career in pinch hitting. I never expected to get a hit. I just expected to have a good approach and positive came out of it. Yeah, you mentioned uh, your pinch hitting prowess. You are the all-time leader among major league players with 23 pinch hit home runs. I don't know if that's ever going to be broken. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's. Uh, I imagine it will. I mean, the only the advantage I have is that pitchers don't hit anymore, right? So you don't have a lot right. of uh, bats pinch hitting. I think I had probably close to 500 plate appearances or 520 pin, uh, plate appearances pinch hitting. You know, Larry Lenny Harris, of course, is the all-time great with over 200 pinch hits. Uh, you know, Greg Dobbs did a tremendous job. John Vanderbilt, you know, all these players did extremely well. You know, I, my job was to be a game changer. God knows if I would have gone on base, I would have clogged the bases up. I wasn't a base dealer, so my, my thing was to be a power guy. And I accepted it, right? I, I love pinch hitting. If I struck out and made a note, it didn't bother me. You know, I had a very good short memory in baseball, and I said, you know, I'll get them tomorrow. I went through a stage in 2009 with the Phillies where I went over 30. Uh, and, and pinch hitting, and, and my two starts were against. <laughs> I think I went over for eight with seven punch outs. But you know, it's just something that it's 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 you can't. You put too much pressure on yourself. You're gonna you're gonna fail in baseball. So I just took the approach of you know stick with my approach. If it works well, perfect. If not, come back tomorrow and do it again. And I was fortunate to hit 23 home runs out of 105 base hits I had in, in pinch hitting.
And by the way, I think some people know this, uh, speaking of 2009, early that season, you hit the very last home run that was called by Harry Callis. That's you know, kind of a neat coincidence, I guess, although we do miss Harry. It, it is. I mean, I'm, you know, it was um, – I, I remember Chase Sutley hit a home run that game. Um, I pinched hit, hit the home run to right field, you know, and, and then unfortunately passed away when we were in Washington. And I actually sat down and talked to him uh, – the afternoon before he passed away about pinch hitting wow. and stuff and he was heading upstairs so you know it was, it was definitely uh it sucked that's for sure um him passing is such a good dude and, and a great announcer and a better person so you know i only met him if, you know a little bit uh and he felt like one of the guys and you know to have that home run with broxton and to have the last hk home run uh you know definitely an honor that's for sure what else do you remember about your 2008 well, part of 2008 and 2009 season with the Phillies. I mean, certainly great teams, a lot of memorable players, uh, some borderline Hall of Famers. You know, what do you remember about the, that season and a half? You know, it was a very relaxed team, uh, very tight team. We got to the ballpark very early. You know, minus Jimmy Rollins, he always got their little you know, just before stretch. And I don't know, we call him Superman because he'd roll out in his uniform and, and uh, like in three minutes, which is impressive. You know, honestly, I think um, when I got traded from Toronto to, to Philly, uh, went to, I met them in Chicago, and it was just a open arms right away. You know, it was, it was a team that, that worked extremely hard. They had fun, but as soon as 7 o'clock came around, or they enjoyed the game, as soon as 7 o'clock came around, everything was serious. And it, worked. it was just a matter of we knew if we had to do our job, and if we didn't do it, the guy behind us would pick us up. So it was, it was definitely a, a, a great time. Um, the fans were unbelievable. I mean, I, I went there at the perfect time, right? 08 and 09, you know, back to back uh, World Series, uh, winning in 08, of course, and losing 09, which I was pissed. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it was just it was one of those things where, you know, Victorino, we, we kept it loose. We had, a good t we had a good time. Like Victorino and I, we were all the clowns, you know, Myers. Uh, Bland. It was just it was just a, a great core of players, and no one thought they were better than the other person. We just went out, played the game, and played the game right, and had great success. You mentioned some of those names. Who was the most fun guy on that team? Oh, probably Worth. I mean, Jason and I became pretty tight over our career, and, and, and Jason was just uh, oh my God. I mean, look at him. He's got a damn horse and won the bell. Yeah. They're, they're, they're all like they're all different, right? I mean. Jimmy Rollins is more quiet. Chase is a great leader by the way he plays the game. Uh, Victorino just never shuts up, which is awesome because he keeps the team loose. Um, Chooch is just funny because we call him a little Tasmanian devil because he just sit there. And, uh, but, you know, Worth was just one of those who went out of his way to, to make everyone feel comfortable. And uh, that's, that's what you need as a team, and, and, and we did. I mean, it was, just, it was just one of those teams where you, just, you, you look forward to going to the ballpark every single day to see your teammates and see what was going to happen that night. Hey, you were a pretty good hockey player back in the day, and afterwards you did a lot of coaching. In fact, you just retired recently from coaching hockey. Yeah. I mean, you're from Canada, so you got to love hockey, but tell me about your love of hockey. Oh, I, I, I was, you know, if for, I mean, where I live in eastern Canada, I mean, it was, you know, hockey was 10 months and baseball was two months. You know, playing minor baseball up here, we played 10 to 15 games a year, then we couldn't get wait to get back on getting on the skates and stuff, but you know, I had a good career. I mean, it was uh, – I definitely wanted to go out and, and be the next Montreal Canadian, that's for sure. Um, you know, that's just how it was, right? I'm a diehard hockey fan. I watch, you know, anywhere from the Flyers to, to Vancouver play. I mean, all over the world I watched the games. And it was just – it was a passion. Uh, it was just something that never worked out. I was small, not good enough, got hurt. Uh, decided to play baseball, and it worked out well. So, But I did. I coached high school hockey for 20 years. I coached John Babs in, in Maine. I did private school for a couple of years, Bangor High School for a couple of years, and then spent about 11, 12 years at FHS where I graduated Fredericton High School. And I enjoy it. I really do. I enjoy getting out there and doing the drills with the players, taking slap shots, talking crap when you're scoring the goaltender. They talk smack when they stop me. So it was it was a great time, and I like to give back to the community, and that's why I do the, the, a lot of the baseball stuff now in Fredericton and, and all over, actually. And uh, tell me about what you do with baseball. Are you coaching baseball? Well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a technical director for the Fredericton Minor uh, Baseball Association up here, and we have you know about seven, a little over 700 players in our in our association. And 
you know, work from five to, to 18 year olds. Um, yeah, I'll go to the fields each night, help run practices. Uh, I run the baseball winter clinic, uh, the spring training clinic, the fall ball season gets a little busy because uh, there's so many different you know fields you got to go to. I help out coach with the, the 18 uh, AAA major and minor team, which we will be heading to Newfoundland next week for the nationals. So that should be fun. But, you know, and then, and then I still big part of the Okotoke Dogs who were out in Alberta, which is a tremendous college program and uh, a tremendous uh, baseball program, which they run from, you know, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kids up there. So it's uh, still trying to stay involved as much as possible. I was just in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for the big 28 down there as well. So uh, I, I've been traveling around watching a lot of baseball and, and, uh, and I still enjoy it. Nice. Well, Matt, uh, a little thing we do with first time guests often is play a game of fast five in our final couple of minutes. You up for that? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> five brief questions, five short answers. So uh, okay. it's the world. Uh, Matt, number one, the Olympics are happening right now. As a 20 year old, you actually played for Canada's Olympic team in Seoul, baseball and demonstration sport at that time. Uh, should the Olympics bring baseball back to the competition? 100%. I think the people would love it. I think uh, a lot of players that have an opportunity to play in the Olympics, I thought it was a dream come true to play in the Olympics. Never thought I'd play pro ball. Got a chance to do both, so 100% bring baseball back in for the Olympics. Number two, in 1993, you played 60 games in Japan. What do you remember most about your time with those Chunichi Dragons? Uh, how quick those sake bombers can hit you when you're sitting at a bar. <laughs> uh, you know, actually, the, 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 the coolest thing is, well, I shouldn't say the coolest thing, is when, it, when players hit home runs and you come across home plate, they pass you a panda bear, and then they give you a carton of cigarettes. Like, what the <laughs> hell? Games change, and now they, now you come across and give you like a like a, a, a edgy bar or a protein shot, a drink or something. Uh, number three in 2015, you were inducted into the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. Congrats on that. Uh, who are two or three other great ball players from Canada? I mean, Larry Walker, of course. To me, I think it's one of the, the, the probably the best players to ever come out of here. You know, Russell Martin, Joey Votto. Yep. There's three right there. Just Justin okay. Morneau. There's four. Ferguson Jenkins. Going, 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 there's a lot of talent there now. Yep, Fergie Jenkins. Well, Ferguson Jenkins, of course. I stay away from pitchers. I like the hitters. I got you. <laughs> Number four, speaking of pitchers, uh, what pitcher did you hate batting against most during your career? And who did you have a lot of success against? I uh, hated face Rhodes. I tell the story about facing Arthur Rhodes. I was 0 for 18. And players said, hey, that's not too bad. I was 0 for 18 years. <laughs> Before I finally got a hit, my last at bat, I faced him in the minor leagues. I faced him in the big leagues. He used to tell me it was coming. I'd pop it up with an elevator shaft. I'd ground ball to first. Finally, my last at bat, I got a hit against him. Short memory, right? I own him. I'm one for my last one. The guy I really enjoyed hitting against was probably a uh, fellow Canadian, Ryan Dempster. Had good success against him. Uh, and Tim Wakefield, I think uh, I enjoyed because he was a friend of mine and you didn't have to think. You just saw the knuckleball and you swung hard and tried to elevate and, and uh, go up from there. And I didn't mind facing Randy Johnson. Hmm, okay. And number five, what is your favorite baseball or hockey movie? Slapshot. Yeah. By far, Slapshot is one of the greatest hockey movies ever. You know, the Hanson brothers had a chance to go out and uh, do some functions with them before. And, boys, they can drink some beer, so... I don't watch a lot of baseball movies, but hockey movies is, is definitely uh, either The Miracle on Ice or uh, Slapshot. Nice. Hey, speaking of uh, Canadians, what's your take on Rob Thompson, the Phillies manager, also a Canadian? Good fellow. He's done a great job. He's, he's, he's definitely a, a player's manager. He doesn't try to manage too much. Uh, very good personality. Knows what he's doing. He's one of those guys who doesn't think he knows it all. He relies on his coaches, which is very important, and he does that. And, and it's, it's awesome to see that he's doing extremely well as a, as a manager for the Phillies. Well, Matt, this was loads of fun. I knew it would be. Uh, you're a busy guy, so I do appreciate you taking 15, 20 minutes to talk with me. Uh, let's do it again next summer. Sounds good. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I love having players on. Yeah, the, the, it was fun. Yeah, they, they the stories are just so good. And uh I, I feel like I I don't know Matt, but I feel like uh he probably had a good time. 
Oh, yeah. He <laughs> seems like a guy you can go out and have a few beers with, just like uh, he did with the guys from Slapshot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's good. And, and thanks to Bill Mattis, uh, again, of All-Star Inc. for arranging that visit with Matt. Glad we could do that, Matt. And uh, Bill are good friends, and and Bill works for Matt to do uh, to do a lot of things. Some really good stuff yeah, thanks. there, too. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. So some real good stuff. I'm not surprised about some of some of it because he's a player and a coach. He knows the ups and downs of it. Uh, but uh, he likes to face Randy Johnson. Yeah, he was okay huh? with that. How about that? <laughs> Whoever said that? <laughs> not not John Crook. <laughs> right. right? And how about 0 for 18 years? That that was good. That was funny. Yeah. That made me Arthur laugh Rhodes. Out loud while I was sitting there with a guest. <laughs> 